Update. Am I the a-hole for misleading my cousin and destroying his marriage? Original post. There's some really weird drama in my family, and I feel like I'm going insane. So here's the background. My family is a little unusual. There are three adults and two children. The adults are me, my wife, and another woman best described as my wife's platonic life partner, and also my very dear friend. I call the partner is Sally. Sally has lived with us for 20 years. The kids call her Ma. We live in a four-bedroom house, and Sally and the kids each have their own bedrooms. Sally is aromantic and asexual. She and my wife love each other very much, but platonically. Sally is like a sister to me. I cannot overstate how incredibly platonic her relationships with both of us have always been. We're all very happy together. I've been super glad we have her since we had a kids. Parenting is so much easier when you have a numbers advantage. My cousin Dave has been married to his wife Mary for something like 15 years. They have two kids. Dave talked Mary into opening the relationship about a year ago, and now they're getting divorced because he's struggling to find anyone willing to date him. Well, Mary isn't, and he's incredibly mad about it and destroying their relationship. And by it's, I kind of mean he is. He's jealous and resentful and making that her problem. And also now mine, because he says it's my fault. According to him, he thought it would totally work great because my family make polygamy and open relationships look easy. Which, what? Setting aside that Sally's relationships with both my wife and me are platonic, there's no open relationship in our household. Sally and I each get a weekly date night with my wife. I take the kids on her night, she takes them on mine. I did say parenting is easier with a numbers advantage. I think my wife and I have significantly more quality time together than we would if it was just the two of us. When the kids can't sleep, they go to Sally. So my wife and I are never disturbed after we go to bed. Sometimes Sally and I go to games together, and my wife takes the kids then, because she's not into sports ball. No one in our house is dating anyone from outside it. These are committed relationships that are, to all intents and purposes, exclusive. None of us has ever mentioned seeing anyone else. Even if we were, which again we're not, I don't see how that would make me responsible for him treating Mary terribly, because he's jealous. Somehow, he was apparently convinced that he and his beer gut would get all the girls, but no man would be interested in a charming, kind woman who keeps herself in reasonable shape and bakes the best cupcakes you will ever taste. I'd have dismissed this out of hand, but my aunt, his mother, and like six other family members agreed that I'm the a-hole and have been insisting that I should apologize to my idiot cousin and help him talk Mary into closing the relationship and staying with him. I like Mary. We've been friends for 20 years and she's a good person. Also friends with my wife and Sally, and a wonderful aunt to my kids. Given the choice between her and Dave, I'd keep Mary in the family along with her kids. Someone in my family's insane here. Is it me or them? Who's the a-hole? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole and your cousin Dave learned a hard lesson many men have learned. They grossly underestimated how attractive their partner will be and grossly overestimate how attractive they will be when they beg to open a marriage. I've read many stories on here that ends like Dave's. She goes along to keep the marriage lively and finds she's quite a prize for others, while bored boy gets left behind in the dust. Makes me laugh out loud every time. You had zero to do with Dave thinking he was going to get laid left and right and getting a rude surprise instead. He made that mess of a bed and he can lay in it. Everyone in the family pointing fingers at you is out of line. Tell them to STF you and back off, or they'll never see slash hear from any of you again. Keep in touch with Mary though, she sounds lovely. None of these dudes seem to stop to consider that they're living proof of their wives' low standards and will not be difficult to replace. Tell the flying monkeys to go screw themselves with a the cactus. Point out that they are morons. Block them, no contact. Move on. Maybe have a barbecue and invite Mary? Not the a-hole. It would shock no one if Opie were to mention that Dave has always been the apple of his mother's eye. It would explain why Dave believes the sun shines out of his behind, and why he thought women would be lining up to ride him. It would also explain why it cannot be Dave who screwed up, and why there must be a scapegoat, Opie. I wonder if in addition, Dave's mom was also a golden child of Opie's parental black sheep? I'm the black sheep child of the black sheep, and my parents' golden child sibling and their children will often wonder how come I have these things. Own a home, in a stable committed relationship with a loving partner, own my car, have fun outdoor toys and trips, when their kids don't. I think for a while, 
My parents' sibling even thought their kids deserved some of my parents' estate when they passed. Now for the update. TLDR. My cousin Dave persuaded his wife Mary to open their relationship. Now he's mad she's dating and he isn't. He was blaming me because he claims my extremely close relationship situation made open relationships look easy just because there's a third adult in my family. A bunch of other people were hassling me to take the blame. So far so stupid, right? Turns out that, unbeknownst to me, Dave's sister Tina reads this sub. A lot. And she saw my post and immediately figured out that it was me posting about her brother, and she won't tell me if she was one of the commenters or not. But for those of you who called that Dave was the golden child, Tina says you were right on the money. She called me this morning, and like, she seemed to find that really validating. And I have literally never heard her sound so happy. She's usually pretty depressed, so thanks. Everyone who decided to read into their family dynamics, you did her a solid. That was about 8 a.m. I had to get off the phone to head to work. And then at about 10, I got a text from my wife that just said, come home now. I got another one just as I was starting the car that said, the kids are fine, which I really appreciate, because that at least let me change gears from panic to concern. At some point, we might discuss that. It would be good to include that in the first text. Anyway, not the point. I got home as fast as I safely could. I pulled up on the verge and tried to go in the front door, but the handle's broken. Mary's car was parked in the driveway. I had to go in through the garage. There inside was my wife, Mary, and Mary's eldest, Jack, male 12. Mary was banging around the kitchen and Jack was crying on my wife. As I understand it, what happened was, just before she called me, Tina texted her brother a link to the post and made some kind of comment about it. I don't know what exactly she said, but Dave went to a rage. Like the kind of thought he grew out of when we were teenagers, breaking stuff and screaming. I thought the last time he did it was the time he hit my little brother and I beat the crap out of him. I'm not saying it was right, but we were kids. I'm also not saying I'm sorry, to be honest. And then he hit Mary. She's got a bruise coming up on her face. I'm shaking writing this. I feel like it's my fault. I can't remember if we told her that he used to be like that. We honestly thought he'd grown out of it. Mary managed to get the kids in the car and drove straight to our place because she knew there'd be someone home. Sally's a stay-at-home mother, and my wife works from home some days, and there's just generally someone home. Dave followed and tried to force his way in. Apparently, my expensive security door was worth the money because he managed to damage the handle but the door stayed closed. Seems he gave up and ran when my wife yelled that I was on my way home. Jack burst into tears while he and I were moving furniture, so we talked and hugged for a bit and I was having a lie down in my bed because he was kind of wrong out. We're waiting for a locksmith as well to fix the door. After that, we're going to take him and Mary to the police station to make a report and give statements and whatever is involved in all that. Sally took our kids and Mary's youngest to my parents' place, in case Dave came back. They're too young for this, but Jack refused to leave his mother. We're going to meet up with them after the police station. Those of you who said we should adopt Mary are getting their wish, at least for now. Jack's going to be sleeping in my youngest big boy bed. The kid let guests stay in his cot and sleep in Sally's room for a bit. But Mary's youngest and my eldest will be sharing a room because they're only a few months apart and they get on well. Mary's sleeping in our couch until we get all this figured out. My youngest will probably think this is the best day ever. He hates his big boy bed and is going to get a reprieve from the transition. Plus, he gets to share a room with his ma and there'll be cupcakes in the house because Mary's stress makes. And our kitchen counter will be covered in cupcakes. I should add that, according to Tina, Dave was telling his family that I talked him into the open marriage thing specifically because I wanted to sleep with Mary, plus a bunch of other nonsense that I've honestly forgotten. It's been absolute crap of a day. It is only half past two. I'm pretty sure I just acquired 12-year-old son 10 years early and seriously messed up, at least for a while. And I have to figure out how I'm going to fit Jack's needs into my life without neglecting my own kids. I can't even tell if I'm exaggerating. Jack's a wreck. And maybe those please be my dad now vibes are temporary, but maybe they're not. You know. Thanks everyone for all of your input. Don't be mad at Tina. I don't think there's any way she could have predicted Dave would lose his mind. I'm not saying it was right. Well, I sure as heck am. Sounds like he needs a repeat performance. Word. I think you need a bigger house so that Mary can stay and maybe bring home a Sally of her own. Heck, even a brick could have more feeling for her than her soon-to-be ex-husband. You aren't responsible. Dave was going to snap sooner or later. Your post moved a timeline up, and while Mary's bruised, she's alive. If something else had triggered him, it could have been worse.
Next story. Am I the a-hole for saying I won't ask for help for my in-laws ever again? My husband, 30 male, and I, 27 female, have been married for a little over a year now, but have been together for over three. He's an only child, which has brought up a couple of issues along the way, but nothing we haven't been able to resolve. When we got married, we moved out of state due to my husband being in grad school and a job offer I got. Unfortunately, life hit us with a curveball, and the office I was working at closed. My husband was close to being done with grad school, and we decided to move back home. My in-laws volunteered to help us with the move back, driving the truck, packing, all of it. They are retired and have the time, so we figured we'd take the help. They stayed with us for close to two weeks where we paid for everything. We made the move, and a week after we get settled in, I get a bill from my mother-in-law for all the expenses they incurred in for helping us move. I was very upset, but my husband wasn't even phased. I asked him what the reasoning for the bill was, and he said, they retired and on a fixed income, so these expenses weren't in their budget. I agreed to pay them what they were asking for, but told my husband I am never asking them for help ever again. I told him we didn't ask for them to come help, they just volunteered. Yet they're charging me for their gas, hotel for the drive back, and some meals? He says I'm overreacting. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. I wouldn't ever ask them for help again either. I hope that they at least helped enough that it wasn't a waste of your hard-earned money. If you have children or pets that they watch for you, will you get a care bill from them? Like, where does this end? They also should have said ahead of time what they expected their costs to be. Or, since it sounds like your husband expected this, he should have given you a heads up at least. Seriously, this is bizarre behavior. OP should definitely send them an itemized bill for two weeks of lodging and all expenses she incurred. Who cares that they're retired? She's unemployed, which seems to be a much worse situation. The balls and some people. Of course not the a-hole. Or if you go over for dinner at their house, will they give you bill at the end? Do you have the tip? Not the a-hole. Hire professionals if you're going to pay people. Not the a-hole. You were also in a situation where you needed to be mindful of your budget. If it had been discussed ahead of time, you could have simply said, thanks very much, but we can't afford to cover these expenses. We'll be taking care of moving in our own, or budgeted for their expenses. Even worse, that her other post from a few months ago is that her husband wouldn't get a job and wasn't interested in taking finances seriously. Not the a-hole OP, but you need to have a bigger conversation with your husband and his financial expectations. He should be responsible for paying his parents, not you. Not the a-hole. As someone that unfortunately had in-laws like this once before, please understand that this is exactly how they will continue to behave for the rest of the relationship together. It will not end here, and this isn't the only situation they will find a way to tally expenses and bill you for. Think very carefully about this, and if you want this for the rest of your life, a serious talk needs to be had about it. Now I really don't see how your husband doesn't think this is absolutely absurd. It's something you should come together with on him as well. I'm now divorced from that situation, but holy crap, it was an absolute nightmare. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my sister use my address to send her kids to school here? My sister, Jane, is a single mother to her autistic son, James. James was having a hard time at his school. His school district is severely underfunded, and they just do not care. The schools where I live are pretty nice, and my neighbors, who have kids, said they have a lot of great programs for kids like him. Since I had extra room, I decided to offer to let Jane and James move in with me so he could go to school here. Since he started, he's been doing really great here. The teachers and aides are much more engaged than at his old school. They've really been helping him work through some of his behaviors as well. My other sister, Leah, is being weird about it though. Besides the better teacher and aides, the school James goes to has a lot of other activities, resources, and in general is just a lot nicer. Lee and her family lived in the same town that Jane and James used to live, so her kids go to the underfunded school. Now, she wants to send her kids to school here too. However, they're not taking any out-of-town students. So Leah wants to use my address so she can send her kids to school here. From what I have seen online, it looks like it can be considered fraud to do that. It's a fairly tight-knit community. People would definitely figure out what we were doing and that they didn't actually live here, so I don't want to take the risk. Besides, Leah's kids aren't having trouble in school. Their school may not be the best, but they're doing okay. 
Still, Leah thinks it isn't fair I won't help her kids get out of the crappy school by using my address, when I have let Jane and James move in just so we can go to school here. It's wonderful that you've opened your home to support your sister Jane and her son James in providing a better educational environment. Your decision to help them was a thoughtful and caring gesture, and it's making a positive impact on James' life. Regarding your sister Leah's situation, it's important to remember that each family's circumstances are unique. It's not unreasonable for you to prioritize your family's well-being and follow the rules of the school district. Jane and James were in a particularly challenging situation and you made a choice that was important to their immediate needs. While Leah's desire to provide a better education for her kids is understandable, using your address in this manner may lead to legal or ethical concerns. As you've pointed out, you're well within your rights to make this decision, and it's essential for Leah to respect your choice just as you've supported Jane and James in their time of need. Ultimately, you've shown kindness and support within your means, and it's okay to set boundaries to ensure the well-being of all involved. Not a whole. There are ways to enrich children's educational development that don't involve fraud. Your sister needs to look into that. I think it's great of you to provide your nephew with special needs resources he really needed. Not a whole. If Leah got busted, her kids would be out, and the school district would definitely check on Jane and her son. It is considered fraud, and you and Leah would be liable. My town is vicious going after families that use fake methods to get their children enrolled. I would not let her use my address. Where I live, families who lie about their address are fined equivalent to tuition. Sucks that not everywhere has solid schools, but committing fraud isn't a way to fix